Hi everybody, it's Kathy, and we're working on part three of our kitchen layout project. And you can see that I have my kitchen designed here. This is my floor plan view, my ISO view. I still have all of my guidelines here because I'm going to be using those to create my backsplash. Right now, I still have the um, typical layers that came in with my cabinets and appliances and I created a countertop layer. So what I wanted to show you today was basically how to create your backsplashes easily and also give you some tips on how to create multiple options for your clients. So um, in the future if you wanted to show them two or three different types of backsplash in your SketchUp model, um, I'm going to show you how to put those in. Also, after that, uh, we'll work on setting up all of the object layers that we need and the location layers so that we can set up all of the scenes for our project. So let's go about making our backsplashes. And if you don't have cabinets, appliances, and countertops on separate layers, then go ahead and try to do that before you get started on this. I'm going to go straight to my uh, kitchen south elevation. This is the one that has the stove, top, oven, and um, and the um, hood, exhaust hood. And what I want to do is I want to turn off my cabinets and I want to turn off my countertops. I'm just going to leave the appliances there so I get some kind of visual idea of where everything is. I want to use these guidelines that I set up prior, prior so that I can put my backsplash inside those guidelines and then go up and around so that I can get behind the stove oven combo there. So I'm going to go ahead and use the pencil tool and snap it right to the back corner of this wall and I'm going to start drawing where I want my backsplash to be. And I'm going to follow my guidelines that I already have set up. I'm just going to go above where the hood is because I know that there's a cabinet there. So I'll just bring my backsplash all the way up and then back around. So I want a continuous line for my backsplash. Now I'm going to push pull. Now notice that I'm not inside my wall um, group, my grouping. I am outside my wall grouping. This is going to be a separate part of the wall and it should not be inside the wall because we don't want it to be sticky geometry. It will be permanently stuck to your wall and you won't have much uh, you won't be able to do much with it if you build it inside your wall group. So now I'm just going to go ahead and push pull this and I'm going to type in 1.5. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm not going to punch in 1.5. I'm going to punch in um, point. Let me go back. I'm going to push pull this. I only want to push pull it to one quarter of an inch. So I'm going to push pull and type in 0.25 enter. So I have a very thin, it's just going to be a tile backsplash. And you can see that when I go close in here that I do have a little bit of a thickness to that. It's a quarter of an inch. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose it and triple click because I want to make this a group. So now down in my outliner down here, you can see that I have this group. I can go ahead and right click on this, rename, and I can call this my South Backsplash. So I can find it again in my outliner. The next thing I want to do now that I've made it a group is I have to click inside it, and I want to go ahead and paint it with some tiles. So I'm going to click inside, go to my Paint tool, and here I'm going to go to my materials and I want to select the tile category. So I'm going to go ahead and click on tile category and I'm going to try to add this ornate tile here and paint that on. Now notice that the tile comes in and it's not quite at the right scale. So what I need to do is go into edit and it's set at two feet by two feet for this tile pattern. Obviously that's not going to be correct in real life. So I'm going to change this to a six inch by six inch tile. And so now it looks more uh, natural and what we would normally see. Let me go ahead and select out of this. 
And just to get an idea of what this might look like, I'm going to turn my cabinets back on and turn my countertops back on. And so now you can get a better idea of what this backsplash is going to be looking like. And we're going to do that same process for each of the other uh, east and west walls. All right, so let's go to the west kitchen west wall where we have our windows. And let's do the same thing. We're going to turn off the countertops. We're going to turn off the cabinets and leave our appliances. You want to be able to see the entire wall, so I want to make sure that I'm in the perspective view, which that's what we were in when we did the uh, south wall. So make sure you're in perspective view. Go ahead and grab the pencil tool. This time we do have our uh, backsplash in the way here. So if we are going to snap to this corner, we're not going to be against the wall. So I do need to move my backsplash onto its own layer so that I can turn it off. Let's select it. Uh, let's look at the entity info so it is on layer zero so i want to go ahead and add a layer and i'm going to call it backsplash layer and then i'm going to move since i have this selected i'm going to move it from here to backsplash and now i should be able to turn that off i'm going to deselect and turn off this backsplash layer and now it's gone. So I want to be against the walls here. I don't want to accidentally latch on or, or have it connect or snap to something that's not against my wall. Uh, that'll create some lines that are not perfectly parallel and you may have trouble, well you will definitely have trouble push pulling if that's the case. So let's start here and I didn't, I'm just going to do a backsplash that basically goes in the backsplash area. This will leave me some wall back here that I can paint later on with a different color. So I do have that created and again I want to push pull just 0.25 inches. Let's double check and see what that's starting to look like. We zoom in closely and it looks like it was created correctly. I'm going to go ahead and paint it with that same material. I'm going to select it first. And you have to edit it again. So right here, I'm going to change it to six inches. Because we have it locked, both the uh, horizontal and vertical size is going to switch to six inches. Whoops, <laughs> let's not paint the whole thing. Uh, okay, so now I can triple click on my backsplash, right click, and make it a group. Down here in my outliner, this is my new backsplash, so I'm going to rename this one, and this is the West. I want to start with word backsplash west wall and we can go back up and we can turn on our countertops, our cabinets, we can turn our other backsplash back on so everything's starting to look pretty good. Um, I want to move this backsplash now to the correct layer so again you can right select it, right click, and go straight to Entity Info, and then change that layer to Backsplash Layer. Because I have it turned off right now, it automatically went back off, but we can turn that back on. All right, and then the final one is going to be my Kitchen East, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, look at this elevation. I only need a backsplash in this one area here. 
and I'm noticing that where I have my guideline is actually not where I have my refrigerator and I would like it to go all the way basically to this point here at least to the end of my countertop so I'm going to snap one more guideline and of course I want to make sure I'm on the green axis when I do this it zoomed in a little too far and it would be nice to snap right to the end of my backsplash I'm sorry my countertop so I'm going to use this one instead of this other one when I create this all right so I'm going to go ahead and do the same process and close up my materials I'm going to turn off countertops and cabinets and curve it around just a little bit so I can see this entire wall. I might need to turn off my appliances too. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to turn off this uh, backsplash layer and draw in my next backsplash portion. Push pull. Ooh. Okay, when does that? Uh, push pull 0.25. Just double check what that's looking like. Looks good. It's against the wall. Use the paint tool. Paint the ornate tile. Kept my information this time. That's good. My six inches. And select triple click. Sorry, triple click and make group. Go back to my outliner. In the outliner, I can right click on my new group, rename, and this is going to be backsplash east. And we can go ahead and now turn back on the layers. Turning back on my countertops, turning back on my backsplashes, my cabinets. The only thing I need to do is move this particular backsplash onto the correct layer. So I'm going to right click entity info and switch that to the backsplash layer so now I have a layer for all my backsplash I have layers for the countertops my cabinets and then we're going to be moving these to uh, or renaming some of these layers but at least now we have some control over what's happening with our model okay so now I'm in my kitchen south view and the reason I like this south view is because I can actually see the east and west backsplash all at the same time and what I want to do is I want to group them all together as one backsplash group because right now they're three separate groups so I'm going to select and hold the control key down each each backsplash right click make group so now you can see over here in my outliner I have backsplash east backsplash south backsplash west and those are all contained inside another group here so I'm going to actually rename this one backsplashes so that's going to be all my backsplashes the next thing I want to do is um, I'm going to deselect for a second so if I select this now I get all the backsplash group uh, selected I want to go up to edit and I want to copy this entire backsplash, all three of them in this one group, and hit copy. And then what I'm going to do is edit again, click on the edit button again, and now I'm going to have this option to paste in place. And what that does is it takes the copy and pastes it exactly in the same location as your previous. So you'll end up with two backsplashes, one basically in the same exact location as the other. I think SketchUp is the only thing in reality, it's not really real, but that will let something occupy 
the same space as something else completely. So here we are, backsplash, paste in place. Now you don't see much happen, but look over here in my outliner. Now I have backsplashes with the east, south, and west, and I have a second group called backsplashes with the east, south, and west. So I'm going to actually rename one of these backsplashes two so that they are differentiated. Now if I select them, I, right now I'm in backsplashes, or I can go to backsplashes two. So either way, I'm in, uh, I, I have two different options. I want to be able to turn them off independently, so I'm going to create another layer. This one's going to be uh, back splash, and then I'm going to add back splashes to. Got quite a, I need to delete this one. Uh, so I have quite a few backsplash layers here at the moment, but all of them will turn off if I click this one. And I need to move the one backsplashes to this layer and the other to this layer so I can uh, turn them off independently. So if I select this one, I'm going to go to Entity Info. I'm going to select this one. This is on um, the instance called Backsplashes, and it's on layer 0. So let's move it to Backsplashes. And then if I select this one, it's on layer 0. I want to move it to Backsplashes, too. Now, hopefully, if this worked correctly, I can turn off Backsplashes, and I will have Backsplash 2 showing. And I can turn off turn this one on and turn this one off. Now they look exactly the same, but what I want to do, I have both of them off. What I want to do is leave backsplashes at this uh, tile, but I want to change the other one. So I'm going to leave on backsplash 2, turn off backsplash 1, go inside my uh, backsplash, and choose to paint it with a different material. So I'm going to go to select, and here I'm going to choose something completely different. So let's go with the square glass tile. Let me get inside here so I'm on the surface. And I'm going to try to get into this other side here. And then select the other wall. And I'm going to deselect everything. And now you can see that I've been successfully able to paint a new backsplash tile on backsplash 2. So back in my layers, if I turn off backsplash 2, and turn on backsplash one, I get my tile pattern. If I turn off backsplash one, a uh, black splash, the <laughs> black backsplashes, say that five times fast, and turn on to, I have this option. So this isn't really part of our assignment or project, but I wanted you to see how that works. So I can set up a scene with backsplashes two on. And then I can set up a different scene with backsplashes one on. And that would be a way that I could show my client two different options for the kitchen. So we will talk about setting up scenes in the next video. I hope this really helped with your uh, setting up your backsplashes and working with layers, working with outliner and also give you some great ideas on how to set up models so that you can show multiple options for design purposes. Have a good night. Bye.